So we are at the halfway mark and I've been seeing a lot of people doing this. So I decided I'm going to do it. I'm going to do my top 10 favorite books of the year so far. Now, now these are going to be in order because honestly, I like looked at them. I don't know which ones I like the most, but I will say one of them is an arc from a manga because manga is kind of weird because it's like, I can't pick one volume. It's my favorite. Because they go by arcs instead of like, oh, this is my favorite arc compared to this arc and so on and so forth. So I just wanted to let you guys know when this is all, when I start showing off the books and stuff, that's why. Anyways, let's do this. My first book is going to be It. This is a reread. I don't usually count rereads, but honestly, the first half of this year, reading, like the books I've been reading have just not been that good. It's kind of a sad truth, but they just, some of the books I've been reading, I'm just not feeling them. And I've read about 70 books this year so far, and ooh, it's been kind of rough, honestly. But yeah, it was one of my favorite reads. It's actually one of my all-time favorite Stephen King books in general. So, like, it was kind of a given it was going to be one of my favorite books I've read this year. I, I'm not going to go into details about it, no pun intended, about it, you know, about the book It, not It. Like it, but it's about it. Anyways, this book was really good. I enjoyed it. I read it back in January, and I so I was doing a Stephen King reread, and then after I read this, I decided not to do it because I got a little burned out from doing Stephen King rereads. I'm glad I did that because, whew. but anyways, <laughs> I really enjoyed this book. On a reread, I forgot how violent this book is, especially like really early on. Like holy crap! Like poor Georgie, right off the get go, it's like the first like ten pages. Georgie's like gone so i'm like whoa and i like the coming of age story he does in this book that i really like and i also enjoyed how a lot of the adults in his book still have like demons that they're trying to like overcome so it, all in all it's a really good book except for that one scene we all know that scene if you read this book even if you haven't read this book you know that one scene so yeah yeah just be prepared for that but I am, I actually been thinking about doing a full review for it because it's been a while. I've never done an it review, so maybe I will. Maybe October I'll do a little spooky reviews for a bunch of books. But yeah, anyways, yep, it was one of my top 10 favorites of the year. So this is the first manga of the year that I read. And I'm not going to lie, this is one of my all time favorite anime slash manga of all time. And I was really hyped when this finally came out. I, as soon as I saw it was released, the day it came out, I rushed to Barnes & Noble and bought it. And I was more than happy. It was the last one that they had on the shelf. So I was like, whoo, good thing I made it. But yeah, I rushed to the store, bought it, and I was super hyped. And that was Vinland Saga, the 13th one for hardcover. I'm waiting for the next one, obviously, because this is the last arc of Vinland Saga. And it's called the Vinland Saga arc, or Vinland arc. I'm not going to lie, this is going to be insane. I'm not emotionally ready for any of it. <laughs> like, it's going to get so sad, so depressing, and things are going to get bad. Like, I, I can just sense it. The way that they have this in the book, the art, the author has the book set up, it's going to be terrifying. Like, I'm not looking forward to what's going to happen to my homeboy Thorfinn and the rest of his people. Like... All he want to do is get to, Vol uh, to Vinland and to make peace. That's all he wants. And this, they were showing a lot of things. I'm like, oh, I'm not looking forward to this at all. Like, I'm, I really am not. Like, holy crap. It's going to be a rough ride and I might cry. So, but yeah, I'm also going to start watching the show. Granted, it's going to be exactly like the manga. I watched the first season. Season two is almost done. So I might watch season two because I really like Vinland Saga. Like, it's... It's a top five manga for me. Like, no joke or anime, whatever one you want to consider. This is so good. It's just, wow. This is just so good. I'm I'm excited. You have no idea how thrilled I am right now. I am waiting for the goal 14 to come out. So this one is interesting because I read Tarzan last year. Like Tarzan. So I decided to read John Carter of Mars. But I read book one. It's called Princess of Mars. Now, Edgar Rice Burroughs, all of his books are pretty short, and that's what I kind of like. They're all, like, under 200 pages, so I read Princess of Mars in a day. Pretty quick read. It was a lot of fun to read. It was 
It was interesting because there's a lot of like old tongue stuff because it came in like the 1900s, which is fine, didn't bother me. But this book in general was a lot of fun, and this is uh has all five of the books in it, so I decided I will be reading book two through book five eventually. It's just gonna take some time because I don't know, I got a lot of books to read, and if I have time and like palette cleansers, I'm really feeling a sci fi book, I'm gonna read book two, especially because I don't read a lot of sci fi. I would like to read at least a couple sci-fi books. I have like a list of books and I'm going to tell you guys what it is eventually. I'm just slowly making it, double checking these are like the ones to read. But yeah, honestly, The Princess of Mars is pretty good. Um, I, I don't really know what to say without saying spoilers, but it was an enjoyable book, honestly. I had nothing else to complain about it. I gave it a five star, so yeah, that's why it's one of my favorites of the year. Dragon Mage. I actually just finished this book, and I really enjoyed it. This was easily one of my favorite reads of the year. The first self-pub book that is one of my favorites of the year. And this boy is thick. Like, you can, like, break down walls with this bad boy. But this book was a really fun read. I enjoyed the magic system. I actually enjoyed the characters a lot. And with me, the story could be alright, but as long as the characters are good and can carry the story, I'm cool with it. And this book did that. And I was more than happy with reading this book. And there's friggin' dragons in this. Like, sign me up. But yes, I really enjoyed it. I give it a 4 out of 5 stars. I wish Goodreads would give you half stars. I would give it 4 and a half. 4.5 out of 5 stars. Because there was a little bit of slow pace parts. But I can't expect that while reading a big epic fantasy. Like, this is thick. But yeah, I really enjoyed this one. So... The next book is actually a book two in a trilogy. And as the Crimson Campaign from the Powder Mage trilogy. Well, I read the Powder Mage. Uh, yeah, Powder Mage. Anyways, so I read Powder Mage two years ago. No, it was last year, sorry. It was last year. And I don't know why, but it took me forever to decide to buy this book online. Because every time I would go to a bookstore, they would have the first book and then the third book. And I'm like, why? Why do you have just, where's the second book? So I finally just gave in and bought, obviously, the second book. And then I read it, binged it, really enjoyed it. This might be my favorite one. I am a big fan of Taniel. And I think Taniel did a really good job through this book. A lot of people complain that Taniel doesn't like do anything in book two, but... You learn a lot with him, and Taniel is kind of like a savage, just saying. But this is my first ever Flintlock fantasy book series, so that was another thing that I was looking forward to reading. And now I'm actually interested in getting into Flintlock. I would like to read more Flintlock and more of, and less Sword and Shield, because that's I read obviously a lot of Sword and Shield, but Flintlock is pretty dope, I'm not going to lie. Because, honestly, I'm, I'm so used to, like... Sword and Shield, and then I read The Dresden Files, which is just... I might do a whole Dresden Files reread eventually, but I'm in the middle of collecting hardcovers of them. But, Flintlock, this is a really good, like, peak right now for Flintlock for me. I would like to get into more. If you guys know any more Flintlock books, message me. Comment down below and let me know. I'm totally cool with that. Anyways, I really like this. I gave this a four... Out of five stars. All of these that upsets me. I don't give a lot of five stars. It upsets me that I can't give it 4.5 out of five stars. Or even a 4.25. It's driving me nuts. Anyways. If I could. 4.5 stars. This is a good book. Alright. So. I'm a big fan of The Witcher. I've read most of The Witcher books. I'm in the middle of collecting all those hardcovers from Barnes & Noble. Because they're sick. Like. Do I need to explain any more of it? Anyways. So. I learned. A while back that the Witcher series was inspired from the Elric saga and I bought this book this bad boy a while ago because it looked sick no idea what it was about but I saw Elric there and I was like that looks like Geralt except really pale and I realized that this inspired the Witcher series so I was like alright well I guess I'll buy it never read it and then for my birthday, my mom got me the second one. And for Christmas, my mom got me the third one. So I was like, 
I guess I gotta read it. So I read the first book. The first book, honestly, all these books are like 140 some odd pages. Really short reads. Like, no joke. And I don't know if I'm gonna like binge read these. I read the first one in a day because it was just, like I said, quick, easy book. But I don't know if I'm gonna binge them yet. I might. I, they might be palate cleansers. It's kind of like the John Carter books where they just might be palate cleansers. They're just there to read. And then that's about it. But I really enjoyed it. Like I said, it was a short book and it really just set the tone quickly. Like there was a part where Elric's like in his room and he has like a sword that he's trying to control that just is like thirsty for blood and gives him like a bloodlust to like fight. But like Eldrick is controlling this sword so it doesn't do that. And I'm like, what is going on? But I really did enjoy it. For like 150, 160 pages, the world building this is insane. For just, like I said, for how short this book is. The world building is just nuts. And that's kind of all you need. But yeah, I gave this a four out of five stars. Fun read. All right. So, I read Fun House by Dean Koontz. Now this was interesting. I actually learned that he wrote this as a screenplay. And then he just turned it into a novel. And then, yeah. So the movie came out. And then they released this the same day this, as the movie, I think. So he got a lot of sales for this because... He wrote it as a screenplay. It was interesting, but this book was fun. Like I said, Dean Coons is really fun at writing quick paced books. Like all his books are kind of like this and you know, pretty large print, honestly, for this book. But this book was kind of weird because it's like sets off right at the beginning where this lady like thinks she has like a monster baby and she literally kills this baby and this baby is like evil. Like I'm like, what is going on? This man is nuts. And then it just like the guy who she's married to tells her like one day I'm gonna kill your kids. You won't know, but I'm gonna kill them to make you feel the same pain. And I'm like, what in God's name is going on? But it was such a quick read. I mean, it's like 300 pages, so I breezed through. I read it in like two days because it was so fast paced and it was so good. And the whole time I was like, what is going on here? So yeah, I did enjoy this. I gave this a four out of five stars. Most of my books here are four out of five stars or four and a half out of five stars. Like I said, only one of them was five stars and that was Vinland Saga because I love Vinland Saga. But yes, this was a good book. I recommend everyone to check this out because wow, fun read. Dean Coates in general is just a fun author. He's a good author. I recommend everyone to go check him out. This book is interesting because it's like, I have a love-hate relationship with this series so far. And I've read two of the books. I'm about to read the third book next month. Well, the fifth book. So this is the third book, and that is Dragon Reborn. I didn't mind this book. I didn't. It's actually my lowest rated one out of all ten of them. The books I'm reading currently that I've liked this year. Because, honestly, like I said, my reading this year has not been the greatest, and I'm kind of upset with that. But Dragon Reborn is... I don't know how I feel about it still. I gave it a like a 3.75 out of 5... And I just was not feeling this book that much. It's just the ending. Jordan's endings don't feel that satisfying. This book did not satisfy me for the ending. Like I'm like, I'm reading 800 pages and I just didn't feel a whole lot. I don't actually remember what happened at the end. I just know that Ran is like proclaimed that he is the Dragon Reborn. And then you get the Shadow Rising. I'm like, oh gosh, because I did not like the Shadow Rising. But anyways, this book was fine, I guess. It wasn't like, wow, this is the most amazing book in the world. But it wasn't also like the worst book I read in 2023. I guess that's all I can say. So this is the last book. The last book that I also gave a four out of five stars across the board. It was three mangas, but it was an arc. It was violent, graphic, and the review's out. So you guys should go check it out if you want me to go in depth about it. But that is Berserk. Of the Black Swordsman arc, and it was so good. I love this so much. It was great. Really set the tone of how messed up the world is, and you have so many questions about guts. I had so many questions. I'm like, guts, why are you the way that you are? Why do you hate people? Why do you not like getting touched? Why do you have a beef with this guy named Griffith? And now I am slowly learning about all this, and I'm like, damn, I'm sorry, guts. I'm sorry I ever questioned you. It really just pains me as someone reading Poor Guts. Like, I'm in the middle of Golden Age, and Golden Age is just insane. Like, I cannot wait to get to, like, the ending of it, and then I can just spiel to you guys about 
the golden age and i'm hyped but yeah so far this was an awesome start it it's like it was fast paced a lot of action a lot of demons you get to see guts after the golden age of what was going on and you're like and i'm scared because like in golden age you're like learning a bunch of stuff and you're like what happened to everyone to get you to here that's all i'm trying to wonder and i am so not looking forward to it but that is my top 10 favorite books of 2023 so far the halfway mark hopefully in december not all these books are gonna be on there i'm assuming they might not be because just saying golden age is gonna be way better than the black swordsman arc but i can't pick just the arc or maybe i will who knows we'll see but yes so far all these books i have enjoyed like i said the lowest one was dragon reborn at 3.75 out of 5 and the highest one was Vinland Saga, because Vinland Saga is just peak right now for me. So I am more than excited to get into deeper of the worlds of the books I am reading in the second half of the year. So far, the second half of the year, how my books are all slated, I think the second half of the year will be a better year. So that means a lot of these books that are on this list so far might not be on it at the end of the year. Anyways, thank you for making it this far in the video. Make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe, and check out all my links down below. I would appreciate all of that. And of course, make sure you guys stay safe, stay hungry, and tell someone you love them. I'll see you guys in the next video. See ya.